Have you been wondering if in Escape from Tarkov, the Bitcoin farm is really worth investing all of the time and money that it takes to upgrade your hideout and get there? Well, hopefully in this video, I'll provide an updated guide based on some of the changes they made in 12.9 to the Bitcoin farm, what it takes to get there and help you make the decision on if you think it's worth it. I'm Jesse Kazam. Welcome back to another Escape from Tarkov video. I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. I'd love to have you stop by and say hey. And if you like this guide, think about dropping a like on the video, commenting down below, or even subscribing to the channel for more content like this. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, before we dive into the hideout and get into exactly what's required for each level and all that kind of stuff, uh, we have to talk about why everybody's freaking out about the Bitcoin farm right now, and that is the value of Bitcoin in Escape from Tarkov. And I've actually been really surprised at how many people that play the game still don't know this, but the vision for Tarkov, and they switched this over a while ago, is that the Bitcoin price is actually linked to the real world price of Bitcoin. So you can see that the physical Bitcoin right here is 0.2 or 20% of a whole Bitcoin. So if you take the real life value of a Bitcoin uh, divided by five, so now you have 20% and then convert that to Russian rubles, that's how much Bitcoin is in Escape from Tarkov. Now, it only updates like once or twice a day or something like that. So you might actually, and they don't, there are, they aren't exactly the same all the time, but for the most part, that is what it is. And in real life right now, Bitcoin is kind of blowing up. So that is why, uh, I mean, when I first started playing Tarkov, Bitcoin, you could sell to therapists for about 96,000 rubles. Um, I remember a few months ago, it was up to like 150, 180. You know, we were like, oh my God, is it going to reach 200K? That's insane. Bitcoin is so valuable. Uh, right now, as of the time of this recording, I can sell a Bitcoin to therapist for 446,000 rubles. And just days ago, I was able to sell a Bitcoin to therapist for 550,000 rubles. So that kind of cuts both ways. Um, I don't know really anything about Bitcoin in real life, and that's definitely not what this video is about. But know that it's subject to the price of real world Bitcoin. If real world Bitcoin crashes, uh, this could go back down to 150,000 rubles uh, if it continues to rise. I don't know what they're going to do because I think a world where a Bitcoin is a million rubles in game is kind of ridiculous. So, but that's kind of why people are freaking out because the Bitcoin is so expensive. Now, as a response to that, instead of adjusting the price of Bitcoin or limiting it, they've adjusted the Bitcoin farm and how fast the Bitcoin farm actually makes coins. So we'll get into that in a second here. Uh, additionally, in response to that, the price of graphics cards has skyrocketed to almost 700,000 rubles on the flea market, whereas they would normally sit in the 300, 350,000 ruble range. So that's why everybody is kind of freaking out. But to dive into the Bitcoin farm, um, the Bitcoin farm is just in the hideout. It basically simulates a real world Bitcoin farm. You have to slot a bunch of graphics cards in. Your hideout has to be on, which means the generator has to be on. You have to have fuel in it. And the more graphics cards you put into it, the faster it will produce Bitcoin. I'm at like 16 hours or 17 hours per coin, 41% uh, and I still have eight hours remaining, something like that. Um, and it holds three. If there are three in here and you don't collect them, uh, the Bitcoin farm will stop producing Bitcoin. You have to come in and hit claim. Um, but, you know, every day, like I said, it's like 16 hours a coin. So it would be have to, it would be like almost two full days before uh, it would fill that up for me. But that is something to note. You have to claim them or else it stops. Um, this is definitely like a long term. If you plan on playing Escape from Tarkov a lot and throughout the entirety of a wipe, a long-term great way to make money towards the end of last wipe i had a uh scav junk box almost filled to the brim with bitcoin and i sold them all at like 250,000 rubles for like almost 40 million rubles at this value it would have been like 80 million rubles but um so it really does prop up your economy long term if you if you plan on investing in the game uh, and playing the game throughout the wipe now, getting the Bitcoin farm going requires quite a bit. So you have to have Intel station level two. And the early game of the hideout is definitely that like game of everything needs something to build. In order to build Intel level two, you have to have lavatory level three, nutrition level three, and med level three. And it, it's something like in order to build nutrition level three, you had to have water collector two. And in order to build lavatory level three, you had to have workbench two. Everything is all connected. It's not exactly like that, but 
the hideout page on the wiki, which we'll take a look at in a second, kind of will kind of help you break that down. And it's quite a bit of investing in the hideout on the front end at first. Once you have Intel Center level two, you can build Bitcoin farm level one. At that point, all you need is generator three, which I don't even know requires much of anything, maybe like vents or something. Once you build gen three, you can build Bitcoin farm two and it kind of goes from there. The three stages of the Bitcoin farm are it allows you to put 10 graphics cards in 25 and 50. And we can actually head over to the wiki and kind of uh, show an exact breakdown of everything that's required and how many Bitcoins it produces at each level. So we're at the Escape from Tarkov wiki. I'll link this down below. This is the you go to the hideout page and then you click on Bitcoin farm here and it kind of shows you what's going on. So it'll show you everything that's required. Uh, so stuff that you can find in raid. If you are aware of this on the front end, it can save you a ton of money. Lots of CPU fans, power drills, power supply units um, for level three. It's like pressure gauges and silicon tubes and stuff like that. Uh, if you know you're going for this, saving these items is a huge win because um, they because once again, Bitcoin is inflated and because um, everybody's trying to get it. The flea market prices of these things are kind of crazy. CPU fans are up to like 30,000 rubles, 30 to 50,000 rubles a piece. Power supply units are 130K. Power, everything is really, really expensive. So if you know you want to go in for this, these things are not hard to find in raid. You don't have to run to like resort lead X spawns to find power supply units. Just, you know, play slow, hit computers, nobody else hits and you can find these items. Absolutely. Um, takes 30 hours to construct the first one, 42 hours to construct the second one, 96 hours to construct level three. It gets pretty, pretty wild. Um, but one of the things that Battlestate Games did to kind of nerf the fact that people were printing, uh, the previous, it was five at 50 cards. It was five hours per coin. So that was almost five coins per day, which is like almost 3 million rubles per day. So at the current rough price of Bitcoin. So what they did to nerf that was they slowed down the um, the progression of how fast you make Bitcoins. So the, the wiki is a really cool tool for this because it's got all sorts of graphs that you can kind of see the curve um, and just like a really basic table that we can show. So you can see at 10 cards, it produces Bitcoin at 16 hours and 32 minutes per coin. Um, and it even breaks down, you know, rubles per hour and payback time in days. I think this is less up to date because of how volatile Bitcoin is right now. Like the the price of it is changing all the time. But this is very believable. This was just updated earlier this week. So uh, unless BSG does something crazy really, really soon, this is probably going to be what it is. Uh, but at 10 cards, it's 16 hours and 32 minutes at level two's max, which is... Uh, 25 hours, it's 10 hours, sorry, 25 cards, 10 hours and 50 minutes, just under 11 cards. And then at the 50 maximum graphics cards, it's six hours and 53 minutes per coin. So I think the general conventional wisdom is that the level two Bitcoin uh, farm with 25 cards is kind of the sweet spot. It used to be about eight hours per coin, which is right at three coins per day. Uh, so that was like, oh, everyone's like, sweet. This is 11, basically 11 hours per coin. So it's like two coins per day. And then every once in a while, you'll get the third coin. The reason that level two uh, seems to still, I think, be kind of the sweet spot is because A, the price of graphics cards. So getting up to 25 cards and then having to double that, you're going to have to either hard farm like interchange or shoreline for those graphics cards um, or buy them off the flea market, which is a ton, a ton, a ton of money right now. Although that might come down. Additionally, it's because solar power is required for Bitcoin farm level three to even construct it. And this is another thing that they've done. They've nerfed, I guess, solar power, made it much, much harder to get. You need four AESAs um, and then filters and military cables it, and 25,000 euros. 25,000 euros is a lot of money. And the AESAs are insane right now in value as well. So that's approximately 4 million rubles right there, unless you find those. And then if you wanted to purchase 25,000, depending on how many euros you had, that's another 4 million. So solar panel panels is incredibly expensive. This will be something I work towards long term because it definitely helps with fuel consumption in the hideout. 
Um, but if I was just going to drop four to six million rules on solar panels, then I'm going to have to upgrade this to level three, which is going to take a bunch of stuff I don't have. And then I've got to find 25 more graphics cards. So getting to Bitcoin farm level three, once again, if you're, if you're really invested in Tarkov, if you play it a lot, if you play it every single day, and that's something to work towards, I think it's going to be worth it. Once again, I got level three last wipe. It was the first time I got Bitcoin farm level three. I was producing coins like crazy. I was able to check Tarkov more than once a day because while I film YouTube videos, I could just grab some of the coins and it made sense, but it's a lot harder to make those recommendations now because uh, we don't know what the price of Bitcoin is going to be. And Battlestate kind of just set a precedent that they're willing to change things in response to that. So this is an updated guide to the guide that I made a while ago because a lot of people were commenting on the old guide being like, yo, this is all different now. Bitcoin's insane. Um, and there's a huge caveat in this guide that you have to kind of pay attention and look at this stuff for yourself because I want to create this content that helps like guide you to like, be able to make the decision if it's worth it, but this is subject to change. The Bitcoin price could be hundreds of thousands of rubles in either direction, more valuable or less valuable by the time you watch this video. So you kind of have to keep your ear to the ground and see what's going on. They can nerf this stuff. They might put a cap on Bitcoin. They might never put a cap on Bitcoin. They might just adjust this. They've talked about adding durability to the GPUs so that you can't keep them in there all wipe. A lot of stuff is up in the air. As it stands right now, Bitcoin is so valuable. It's almost no brainer worth getting to level one and possibly level two. The way I do it is every time I, every time I make a Bitcoin, I sell that Bitcoin and then pay the difference on the flea market for a graphics card. So that way I'm not just outright buying 25 graphics cards. And I'm also not just hard farming. I'm still questing. If I find graphics cards, I put them in my gamma because even if they're not found in raid, I can slot it in here. But every time I create a Bitcoin, I just only, that means I only have to pay maybe one to 200,000 rubles for a GPU off the flea market. And in a week or two, I'm going to have 25 and then I can start actually making money off the Bitcoin and then long-term start going for Bitcoin farm level three. Another quick thing to note, we're here on the wiki looking at the hideout management skill. And if you notice the hideout management skill, the elite perk has something to do with Bitcoin. It adds two to the storage limits of coin in the farm which means you can store five Bitcoin in there before the Bitcoin farm stops producing, which this actually has pretty significant implications. Once again, prior to the changes that were most recently made, it was really only worth investing in Bitcoin farm level three if you could check Tarkov more than once a day, because at 25 cards, you were making them at eight hours a coin. That's just about three a day. And so if you were, if you had 50 graphics cards and you were making five a day, but it stopped producing at three and you couldn't check Tarkov to claim those coins, it was kind of worthless. So it's definitely, this it doesn't make as big of a difference because even at 50 cards, it still takes, um, you know, seven hours a coin or something like that. But if you get hideout management level elite, you have two extra slots, which means you don't have to check Tarkov quite as often uh, and you're making mad money. Now you increase this skill by um, crafting items in the hideout, you get a point, a skill point per craft, um, or per 10 resources spent on filters or fuel. So when you've got like water collector or a bunch of fuel in your generator, you're passively leveling it as well. And then you get a lot of these points in the beginning by upgrading modules in the hideout, you get 20 points per upgrade. This is also a practical skill, which is interesting. Practical skill. If you get the library, the library increases how fast you level practical skills by almost 35%. So once you get library, if you keep something crafting in just about everything and try to upgrade as many modules as you can, um, it's not unlikely that you can get elite level hideout management during the wipe. They added that skill towards the end of last wipe and some people who really wanted to see what that elite perk was got it. So if you're on your crafts and stuff like that, you can definitely get that skill um, up as well. But that is for the most part it. That's the Bitcoin farm. That's like you can check the, the wiki for what it takes to get there. And you can kind of check the flea market for the prices of those things and find them. They've changed how fast you can produce Bitcoin. The Bitcoin value is going all over the place. And the hideout management skill, especially in conjunction with the library, 
could long-term net you some success as well. So I hope that this updated guide helps and provides some relevant information, but also kind of gives you the tools, whether it's the wiki or just what to check in the hideout, um, gives you the tools to kind of figure this stuff out on, on your own, because depending on how you play and how easy it is for you to make money, you might say that this is worth or not worth. Um, and as the game progresses and as these things change that you can kind of get that information yourself as well. Of course, if any huge sweeping changes are made, I will definitely update this guide again so that my information is up to date. But hopefully this gave you the tools to yeah, decide if this is worth it for you and get the most up to date information so that you can start basically printing money using the Bitcoin farm in Escape from Tarkov. Thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to check out this video. If you liked the video, think about dropping a like, commenting down below if you think the Bitcoin farm is worth it or not, uh, and subscribing to the channel for more content like this. All that stuff really, really helps me out, probably more than you know, so thank you to those that do that. Um, like we said before, I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. I'd love to have you stop by and say hey. And if you're looking for people to play Tarkov with, uh, our Discord link is down below as well. We've got a bunch of people in there, a few thousand from Tarkov veterans to newer players. And there's always people that are willing to kind of hop in some raids with you. We've got merch. Those links are down below. Um, and the channel sponsor, Juju, if you're looking for that, that link is down below as well. Thank you so much for stopping by. And I will definitely see you all on the next one.